Okay, now that we've gone over implicit differentiation, we can now work with finding the derivative of an inverse function. So this will be on derivatives of inverse functions. We're going to set up a statement first, and then I will show you what it, the statement means in a proof of the formula. So if y equals f of x is my function, and it has a point, has any point x, y, that lies on it, and also has an inverse. So when, when we say that it has an inverse, it means the inverse must exist. Then the function and its inverse has derivatives that are reciprocals of each other. So let's think back and pull from our memory um, of previous courses where when we were given an equation, y equals f of x, and we knew that x, y was a coordinate point on the original function, so x, y is on your original function, and you were asked to algebraically find the inverse given that the inverse existed, our first step would have been switch x and y. And then, so we're going to switch x and y, switch x and y. And if you guys remember, you would then try to isolate y. Well, then this y then became your inverse function, right? So when we solved for y, we got y by itself, and then we said y is blank. And that blank was uh, the expression for our inverse. Well, now what we're going to do is... Uh, because there's nothing to solve for here, we're not, this is a, a, just a general equation. What we're going to do is, well, how would we find the derivative? And we'll, we'll do this and see that there's a relationship between the derivative of an inverse and then that of the original function. So let's say that we took the derivative with respect to x. So if we did, the derivative of the left-hand side, x, is just 1. The derivative of um, f of y with respect to x is implicit because it's in terms of y. So f prime of y times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. And so dy dx now represents the derivative of my inverse. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for dy dx, and I get dy dx, the derivative of my inverse, is 1 over f prime of y, where f was my original function. So I can highlight that for you guys. So f, and then this is f prime, so the derivative of my original function. So we will make a few notes to make it a little bit more straightforward for you. This y value is the y value of the inverse, because we've already made that swap. Or we can also think of it, it will be a little bit more useful to us to think of the y value of our inverse also happens to be the x value of our original function. Another way of writing dy dx, um, the derivative of my inverse function, is uh, the derivative of f to the negative 1, which is my inverse function with respect to x, is equal to f prime of y. So the process in which, let's just make it nice and simple with these two easy steps. So process to find the derivative of my inverse function is, we're going to take the derivative of our original function plug in x value of original function into reciprocal of the first step.
Okay, and the what I'm going to highlight here, the importance of this discovery is that to find the derivative of the inverse function, we don't necessarily need to ever know what the inverse function is. As long as we know what the original function is and we, we can find the x value of the original function, we can use that to find the derivative of the inverse. And so let's take a look at the first example, which is embedded in that oh so important find the equation of a line uh, tangent type question. So uh, find the equation, eqn for equation of line tangent to 4, 2, coordinate point 4, 2 of the inverse function of x if your original function, if f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x minus 8. Now, it says it's it must be tangent to 4, 2, and I am assuming that this 4, 2 is uh, a point that falls on the inverse from the way that it's phrased, says, since it says tangent to 4, 2 of the inverse. To verify, um, that means that, uh, so this is in, in a different color, I'll say that this is our original function. So you see here that we uh, don't have the inverse anywhere. And then also think about the process uh, in, from uh, your previous courses to find the inverse. We would have to replace all the, we would, and watch my um, pen here, but we would have to replace these x's with y's and replace this with x. And it's not, it's not straightforward to isolate y in this case. So it would be a hassle to find the, the inverse function first in order to find the derivative. And most likely the questions that you will be presented will uh, be given questions where it's impossible to isolate uh, y if you're trying to find the inverse. So what we do is then we use the process that we discovered above to find the derivative of the inverse. So the question is, is 4, 2 lying on the inverse, which I think it is, um, uh, or is it on the original, and how do we check? So if this is the xy, xy of the original, or sorry, of the inverse, like I'm suspecting, then my original would then have a swap of um, the 2, 4 being um, the coordinate point that actually falls on the original function. And how do we verify? Well, we plug in. If I were to plug um, 2 into the x's and then 4 into the y's, do I get that expression? And then if I double check, it does indeed work out to where that, that's the original coordinate point. So we go with the two steps that we have above. We take the derivative of the original function. We get 3x squared plus 2. And then we do the reciprocal. So now it's the derivative of the inverse function is the reciprocal of the reciprocal of the derivative of the original where we plug in the x value that we plug in is the x value of the original function so this coordinate point here so x equals 2 and if i do that i end up with 1 over 14 to answer my the full question i would now plug in my y coordinate, but remember it's tangent to the inverse function, so y minus 2. We want to go back to the, in, the point that actually falls on the inverse, so the y value is 2. So y minus 2 equals the slope, which is 1 14th, x minus 4. For example 2, we're going to have a function defined as g. So let's write out this example, example number two. Let G be defined as G of X equals X cubed plus X. And what we're gonna do is define F this time as the inverse. Okay, so instead of just saying inverse of G, they're defining F of X as uh, the inverse of G of X. And we're given, so this doing it this way, it makes it a little bit more clear what the coordinate point, uh, whether the coordinate point falls on the original or on the inverse. So f of 2 equals 1, what is the value of f prime of 2? So question is, 
What is the derivative of inverse? Okay, so add a coordinate, a specific point. So let's go and start with, um, if I know only my original function, I that's all I need, right? I take the derivative of my original function. So g prime of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1. And if I were to find the derivative of the inverse function, the inverse function is f, remember? It would be f prime of x is equal to 1 over g prime of x, where the value that we're plugging in, that bar just means that we're going to plug in a value, is x of the original coordinate point. Okay, so x of the original coordinate point. Well, let's go back to this coordinate point here that we're given. This coordinate here said that, well, we know clearly that f is our inverse function, so therefore this is the x coordinate is 2 and the y coordinate is 1. So on our original function, our coordinate point must be the opposite, 1, 2, right? Switch the x and y. And the x value then that we're going to plug in is the x value of the original. So x equals 1. And so following through with this, we get uh, 1 over 3x squared plus 1, where we're plugging in x equals 1. And when we do that, we end up with 1 fourth. Our last example for this is tabular, where you're given a function f and its inverse, sorry, and its derivative takes on values shown in the table. If you define g as, if g is the inverse of f, find g prime of 6. Okay, so what table are we referring to? So we have a table, we have three columns to the table, x, f of x, and f prime of x. And within that table, we're given two rows. Two additional rows where um, one x coordinate is 2 the other one is 6 and f of x so let's go ahead and fill in the table with the corresponding values okay so they want me to find the uh, g is the inverse and they want me to find the derivative of the inverse at 6. So we're going to first identify um, point on inverse. Okay, so the point on the inverse, specifically speaking of uh, 6 here, is 6 comma something. So we go back to our table and at 6 we notice that the this is the point on the inverse, so the x coordinate of the um, so I don't see g anywhere on my table of values, but I do see that I have my original function, and I know that the relationship between the original coordinate point and then that of the inverse is that it's swapped. So the 6 of the x coordinate of the inverse must be the 6 of the original function. So we know that the y value is 6. We go back to our table, and the y value f of x um, is equal to 6 when x is equal to 2. So now we know, okay, from the table of values, that there's a the original coordinate point is 2, 6, so therefore the point on the inverse must be 6, 2. And they want me to find g prime of 6. And I know I can find the derivative of the inverse without knowing what the inverse function is, simply by taking the derivative of the original function and plugging in the x value of the original. So f of f prime of 2. So 1 over, and then I look at my table values, go to row, the row where I'm looking at 2, and then f prime of 2 would be 1 third. So 1 over 1 third is 3. 